so his mindset. So like, how do you become a delinquent? Like when, when your mum's black belt, your sister's black belt, <laughs> your dad gets you into fighting, where the fuck does the delinquency come in? They weren't there to guide me. They were working too much. Yeah. You know and, right? Yeah. And then, Where did you grow up? Which area? Mascot. Mascot, yeah. Mascot was a delinquent area. East Lake's mascot? Yeah. We were in the same era. Like I'm, I'm 47, you're 46. 46, yeah. So we are in the same era. Yeah. So they're, they're, what people don't understand about Mascot and East Lakes, <laughs> we came from a generation where our parents weren't around much. Yeah. That's and that's right. why, that's why, hence the delinquency. Yeah. But. Well, you, I, I grew up in the back of a cleaning van, pretty much. Is that why you got in a bit of cleaning as well? <laughs> okay, <laughs> <with> the crack. <laughs> <laughs> but, so let, let's go back. Six years old. You get into martial arts. Yeah. You get into karate first. How long did you do that for? Till I was about 13, I think. 13. 12, 13, 12. 14, I don't know, around there. From 6 to 13, you're growing up, you know, in the back of a cleaning van. Pretty right? much, Pretty much, yeah. 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 When did you start getting into trouble? I was probably about 14, 13, 14. 14. Yeah. 13, 14. And... Started playing up in school. I've seen you train people. You've got a great IQ for martial arts boxing. Has that, has that, is that, does that come easy for you? Like dealing with these young people, coaching them, does that come easy for you now? Oh, like you or see something and you call it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some people say, oh yeah, some people say, oh, I had to see that. Some, it's different. Like I could be wrong sometimes. Yeah. But you see something and call it. And um, it sort of makes sense. But bro, it makes sense to you, but because you, you've been in the fight game for so long, like think about it. You're you're the pioneer of MMA in this country, right? Yeah. Did you th One. did you th you, yeah? But did you think back then <clears throat> that that's what you were doing? What do you mean? Like you know when you started doing MMA when you went to Japan mm -hmm. and fighting the K1, like that's they're, they're not a easy feats to do. Like where was your where was your mindset at that point? Like you just wanted to fight. You just wanted to fight. Yeah. And how far did you want to go? Like, I was that, <laughs> like my manager, Ray, would just get me any fight and I'll just take it. Because you're, why you're I, the guy <laughs> that didn't need much prep. Like, no, people would ask you, I'd five days out, notice. one day yeah. out, you're the guy that was ready. Like, yeah. what, how did you? There was one fight against a guy called Shishido. You can see there's photos of me doing a suplex and that big flying kick. Yeah, I'm wearing yeah, like hibiscus shorts. Yeah. I think I had five days notice. I had to lose seven kilos. In five days. <laughs> and then on top of that, they tell me um, I had a four, uh, 24 hour weigh in. I got to Japan, it was a 12 hour weigh in. So I had to make weight and then fight the same night. And um, Jason Lappin was um, caught in my corner. And I got out of the sauna. I didn't know where my stuff was. I was, <laughs> I was like half dead. And um, but you recover and just fight. Because I always believed if you had to do it, you would. Hmm. <laughs> if someone had a gun to my head and I had to do it, I'd do it. So that, well, you just is, do it. But that discipline is not a – like, okay, you're, you're helping a lot of young people, right? Yeah. Do you kind of see when, you, when you're looking at them go, fuck, this kid just doesn't have that – if he had that discipline, you know, things could be better for them? Or do you go – Fuck, where's that generation, like people like you, where that you work so hard, you didn't need, you know, many days to, to get ready for, you know, a big bout. Do you find that there's the young kids today, it, it's, it's a little bit different? It's a bit different. I yeah. think we have more options as well yeah. these days. And like also, I, I was obsessed. Mm. So I think that helps as well. Um, I was obsessed in fighting. I just lived it and breathed it. I loved it. And uh, um, yeah. So your your mum doing karate like when did she start? <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> and your sister, how old is your sister? Five years older than me. Five years older than yeah, you. Fine. So all you've watched is fighting throughout your whole life. Yeah, I was like, okay. yeah, I was a baby and I was I was doing karate. I was watching them. <laughs> and at school, did you get into a lot of fights, trouble? When I hit high school, like when I hit about thirteen, fourteen, look, I experienced some trauma in life as well. Yeah, growing up, so. I guess that trauma was sitting there. I didn't know how to express it. So it came out through, I guess. What was the trauma? Like fights at school? Or which? Oh, no, just personal traumas. Yeah. Yeah. Do you still deal with those demons? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they're tame. <laughs> <laughs> 
Phil, I had him on the podcast <clears throat> a few weeks ago. Yeah. He said you were very instrumental. Like he looks at you as like the guy that pushed him through these world records. Like would you – I said to Phil, I said, mate, Phil, what you're doing is pretty crazy. Like when you look at something like that that he achieved and he's going for another world record soon, how do you get someone to that point? Like what's the talk? Because – you can't. You, you can train for it, but you can't just go. Hey, I'm going to do a 24 hour practice run. I think ob obsession again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he was obsessed, and you were obsessed in the whole process. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, he sort of had a bit of self doubt initially, and I, I snapped him out of it. I remember I was he he gave me a shot, and I'm always grateful for it. He gave me a shot um, with a bit of work. Mm. I needed it. Um, he helped me out and helped me greatly. Got me back on my feet. Um, and we just, we just started talking and well, hang on, this guy's a bit, doesn't believe in himself. So I started attacking that yeah. and he started believing in himself and then I just wanted to break a world record. You know, let's do it. <laughs> 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 he wanted to, he, he took lead. And I said, let's go. How many I'll hours were you there? Cause I remember I was in that warehouse. 24. You were there for the 24? Yeah, I slept. I, I, did, my <laughs> sh I did my shift. <laughs> but <laughs> we had shift actively, within, how long were you there? Probably six or. Six, yeah. Even more, just mucking around. Yeah. And, and my shift, I think, was six hours. Was yours towards the end? In the middle. In the middle. Yeah. In the middle. So before we obviously... His uh, wife I, did a shift too. Did she? Yeah, she staunched all of us. <laughs> 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 yeah. She was the toughest. <laughs> she, he, he said that she's been a massive rock in his life yeah. um, and helped him get through a, a, a lot of that. Obviously, you know um, much more personally. Yeah. Um, how, how important is that when, when you need people like that around you? Because, you know, he was instrumental in you sort of making a comeback. Because you've done cleaning for a while. I remember I seen you at Bondi Boxing and you're like transitioning back into training people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? So were you training people before the cleaning and then you went yeah. to cleaning and then back? Yeah, I had max fit. Yeah, I remember Max. And Fitt. then we're going to talk about Max because <laughs> fucking Max Fit was massive. You had Leighton Hewitt down here. You had every celebrity fucking. <laughs> yeah, it was ready to just it was ready to go, and then yeah. um, just personal reasons, yeah. sort of. Crashed. How do you how do you look? When you <clears throat> started Max Fit, you you kind of had big dreams. Yeah. With it. What happens in those moments when you have those goals and those big dreams? And that ain't sort of come to fruition. Like, what did, what did you do? How did you come back from that? You just reset your goals. Yeah. You have to force yourself. And they don't feel like it. Look, it takes time, though. You can't do it overnight. Well, I couldn't do it overnight. Hence, going to cleaning, had a mm. break. And, yeah, yeah. sort of come back with unfinished business. Do you feel like you, you know, now at this point where you've got like a second lease of life with what you're doing? Like is your passion is your passion back? Because yeah, obviously, yeah. like last week, you had a fair few boxers yeah. um, going in the ring. Is your is your passion it's, back to where it's? It's sort of molding itself differently to what I thought as well. Yeah, because I was going to bring Smash back like Maxfield, but it's mm. sort of molding itself where there are real fighters. Mm. So, yeah. Did you have to um, go out on your own? Did you have to leave Bondi Boxing to find that new self? I was in there. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. just happening while I was yeah. living day to day. Yeah. yeah. And and now when you look at your goals, do you go to yourself, you know what, I, I, you know, I, I've got more in me. Do you, do you like, because what happens, you know, you, you get in your 40s, you get in your 50s, and I see a lot of men starting to lose self-belief. You yeah. know what I mean? It looks like you're reinventing yourself. Again. Yeah, like I'll probably fight this year. <laughs> Far out. That's the <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, I'm serious. And... Yeah. Uh, in the Masters. In the Masters, yeah. yeah. But at what point, like, did you ever think you were going to be in that position and think that way? What do you mean? Like, to get back in the ring. Oh, did you always uh, want to no, get back in? No, 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 no. So you're doing it because Mike Tyson's going back in or? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I look at him like crazy, but I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> so um, it's just that, I don't know, the hunger, it's yeah. still burning. Yeah. No, I also, like, I see the kids sparring. I see a couple of mistakes. I'll go in and I'll trial it. It's mm. working. Mm. I start sparring. I'm back in there again. Because <laughs> you're looking in shape. I was going to say that to you. You, you look like it looks like you've been training hard again. Getting there. Getting there. Getting there. Do you do you keep up with um, 
mixed martial arts these days? Do you boxing or and who do you kind of follow in in MMA or no, I just, UFC? I just watch it. Yeah, I just watch it. Have they changed their processes and systems? Because obviously oh, these guys are getting so much better. They're putting in so much the more. They've got so coaches high. for so many different, you know, yeah. um, uh, disciplines now. There's so many different disciplines. Let me ask you a question. What What does it take to be a mixed martial artist and how many different disciplines do you need and require? Um, so I'll say it again. How many different oh, disciplines sorry, do you need? Me. Do you, do you need um, in mixed martial arts these days? Like you know, you got karate, you got grappling. Well, look, in the, you got in, initially, in the initially, it was like judo versus taekwondo, boxing versus karate, blah. And over time, it's, it refined itself into its own sport. So you need to know mixed martial arts. Hmm. Um, At your joint, do you do you teach mixed martial arts? Not yet. Mainly? Not yet. Yeah, yeah, not yet. But yeah, mixed martial arts is an art in its own. It's yeah. it's refined itself into its own sport yeah. or art. It's everything. But look, you take every sport of the, from the Olympics, boxing, judo, taekwondo, what else is there? Well, you, you, judo. Got judo, you, you, you got judo, you got your, your conventional wrestling as well. Judo, wrestling, mm, yeah. taekwondo, and boxing. boxing you yeah. put that together, you pretty much got mixed martial arts. Yeah. Right? And um, that was the argument when they wouldn't legalize it. Yeah. You, you take all those sports and put it together, and it's, yeah. it's what it is. And well, you got kickboxing too, because they're kicking a lot too, right? It's taekwondo, right? Yeah, taekwondo, yeah. that's right. You know, when you look at um, MMA itself, <laughs> I would look at it as one of the toughest sports because to be able to do all those different disciplines, it's it's really the toughest, one of the toughest sports because how many hours do you have to train to be able to do mixed martial arts? Like hours. if you're looking at hours. Yeah, hours. Yeah. yeah. And now everyone's getting physically better as well. Yeah. Because everyone knows everything. It's becoming like a, even a genetic thing. Yeah. Huh? So you need But a like back in the day, we were training like six hours a day, getting injured, getting sick, because we had to go to different places to train. Yeah. Do wrestling here, kickboxing there, boxing there, jiu-jitsu here. So it was about six hours a day. It was, it was, it was, yeah, it's very different back then. So you, you obviously you've done uh, grappling as well, yeah. right? Um, and I think it says it here, you, 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 you competed as well in – a, um, I think you got bronze medalist in 1999 in the Greco-Roman Championships. The Olympic trials. Yeah. Yeah. What was that like? Talk, talk us through it. That was pretty cool. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> um, that was in Melbourne. It was in Melbourne. Yeah. Tell me how it went because, I mean, that's not – it's, it, it's, 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 it's a long time ago. Yeah. I remember I cop. Yeah, there's a position, position called Parte, and this guy headbutted me. I remember I just cracked him. <laughs> I remember that clearly. Are you allowed to do that? No. <laughs> That's not and then Leonard, one of the coaches goes, Stop that. He jumped on. What are you doing? And That's my, yeah, it's a clean memory, but I remember. So, what's the, the difference between uh, Greco Roman wrestling to Jiu Jitsu? Oh, there's no commission. submissions. And there's it's no more submissions. Of a, it's more, it's a, yeah. 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 So there's no submissions. And there's so no uniform. There's no gi. There's no gi. No. So how do you get points? What do you have to get the guy on their back? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Was that your sort of like initiation into into that the sort of grappling? Did you do any jujitsu? Ju yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a brown belt. Wow. <laughs> Overdue. I think I was on my purple for like 15 years. <laughs> 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 I got my blue belt by winning the blue belt state titles. Yeah. It was just a funny road, yeah. Um, because I was a lot of, I did a lot of no Yeah. Um, and also I did a lot of kickboxing, but I was still grappling, but not, um, I didn't have discipline. I wasn't committed. Yeah. So, I, was, I was still grappling though, quite a lot over the years. Um, yeah. <laughs> Do you think you got better discipline now? Oh, like yeah. If you, oh, with jiu-jitsu? Yeah. I like, love it, man. If you had the mind you had right now, back then. It'd be different. Because now I'm appreciating the art hmm. before you just want to win a fight. When you're talking to the young people, how many people were like you that you see now where you're trying to say, listen, don't do this, man. Like be more committed, be more disciplined. Because I see it a lot. 
I see Honestly, a lot. seen a lot. Like I go, fuck man, this guy's gonna waste his time. He's just gotta work harder. Like, you know, you and I have been in in fitness for a, a long time. Mm. You know, when I look back at my twenties, I I worked, but I didn't work with the intent and the purpose that yep. I work with now. Like, you think you're doing stuff, and 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 but but you're really not. You're doing it, but you're just probably just letting the hours tick over. Yeah, yeah. I think you and I have got a lot of experience to help young people, especially the part where, you know, I think for you and I it was, but you know, to be impressionable is to be around your mates, to fuck around, create trouble, mm -hmm. you know, just having fun. How important is it to to for the young people to remove that out of their way so they can become good at what they need to become good at. <laughs> it's everything. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you might not have that's right. <laughs> but do you have conversations with these young guys? I do, but like what are some of the conversations? These guys come into your gym, like what do you say? Like they connect for that time. Hmm. And then they go out and then they're influenced again. Yeah. But at least that, that was my theory initially, but it sort of dropped off. Like I'd get him in for five minutes a day. Because yeah. you tally that up, it's hours over the year. Yeah. Um and they, 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 they adhered to it. They, they were doing it initially in the beginning and they were coming in, hitting the bag, getting a bit tired and leaving, hopefully leaving in a positive state. Mm. Um, but now it's sort of dropped off again. Do you have like, um, like a grip conversation with them or a WhatsApp grip? No. 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 They're all kids. They're all kids. Yeah. yeah. They, they don't focus for too long. <laughs> no. Out of the young kids that you have, you know, which ones do you think are, 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 are going to sort of go on and do well? Can you see that? And I can see it in all of them. Yeah. There's a lot of trauma in there. <laughs> There's a lot of trauma. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a driving Maybe. force. It's a good driving force. Yeah. Trauma can take it either way. Yeah. That's, my, that's, that's how I see it. Yeah. It can take you either way. Yeah. It, um, it gives you a lot of energy. Anger, trauma. Yeah. Um, it gives you a lot of energy. So you, you put that in the right direction you can go far with it yeah but you go in the wrong direction yeah we know what can happen man look at you know when i look at trauma i see it in people in so many different ages of course we, bro street buffet is all trauma and it's all trauma and mental illness yeah and it's probably all started with trauma yeah do you think for trauma that we don't have enough good communities that can help these individuals like you know like within communities like you go you might have like touch footy game you might have this you might have that but do we do you think we have enough of that we, where people can express do. themselves th and talk i think we do but i think the issue with trauma is that depending how bad the person's been traumatized they develop this sort of ego like yeah. a defense mechanism mm. and no one's going to break through that because especially if they're traumatized by someone they trust mm. How are they going to open up to anyone? Like well, it's, they, a, it's, they, it's they a protection don't. mechanism. It's it's defence. Like, yeah. I think we all we, we all suffer. Yeah. Trauma. There's to different an levels to it. Yeah. But then there's also our, how we perceive it as well. What might be traumatising to you is not traumatising to me. So, but I think we all develop that. It's that wall, and that's that. That's what's hard to break through, and that's where the healing starts. Mm. When I was talking to Phil, when <coughs> I didn't realize this, but I'm talking to him, he goes, you know what, Mets, I'm going to fucking show these people. I, it was the first time I seen that competitiveness in him. Yeah, he's a beast. He's a fuck, yeah, but he doesn't, he doesn't show that, right? Yeah. But he's a fucking competitive guy. I know. He goes, When's, when are people going to fucking notice me and see me? I go, Phil, you're fucking doing <laughs> shit that's fucking massive, bro. Yeah. You know, and do, do, you, do you have that competitive nature in you still? I think I do, yeah. 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 What yeah. do you mean you think you do? That's why <laughs> I'm trying to be <laughs> humble about it. <laughs> you know what I said to Ken before you go? I said, this guy's not normal. Okay, he flies under the radar. He's much better than m most people perceive him to be. Because you are. You, you are. Like, I mean, I was talking to Sam who was training here and he goes, I'm going to see Ian, Ian to do some boxing, you know. Um there's a lot of people that depend on you and what you do from the street buffet. Like you talk to Phil, there's so many people that depend on you. 
Is that is that is that is that a lot of pressure sometimes? Or yeah. no, you enjoy it. I don't, know, I don't even notice. Yeah. Yeah. You just go on and fucking do your own thing. Yeah, it's just part of a day. Your daughter, she's she's now in. Well, she was killing it when I was at Bondi boxing. What is she doing? Jiu jitsu, boxing. Jiu jitsu, jiu jitsu. Yeah. Yeah. Where's she at with it? She's on a casual path at the moment, but she's getting back there. Yeah. Yeah, she went pretty hard. Yeah. Um, and she's still figuring out figuring out who she is. She's fourteen now, so yeah, but she's back on the path. She? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's training um more consistently again. That's a tough age for females. Yeah, but she's there. It is. It's got to. <laughs> Let him out and reel him back in. Let him out and reel him back in. <laughs> so, with 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 your daughter, what kind of a dad are you? Are you pushing her hard or are you? No, no, no. How does it work? I, I touched on that. It wasn't working well. Hmm. So I just, I, I I speak about. I keep her. I keep the element around. Hmm. I keep her surrounded by it, and she does more more what she wants to do. Like, yeah, like she went back to training because she wants to. Hmm. I think that's the best way to yeah to have it. You can't push people, right? No, you can yeah. for a certain amount of time, but they're just gonna yeah they'll quit. I guess I guess like if you're <coughs> training someone for a fight and they're <coughs> in camp for eight weeks, and you know it's an eight week camp or whatever it is, yeah, you can then push them pretty hard, right? Compared to them working in the off season. Obviously, you want to keep the discipline there. I, I, I was here with Sam Goodman, and you know he he'd been training his butt off from the age of like thirteen, something like that. And you know the teachers thought he was crazy, but I guess you know for him it was like he had this discipline, and his dad was here, and it was like he couldn't break that discipline because his dad said, "If you want to break that discipline, you can break it, but don't expect to be a world champion." Yeah, yeah. Like how important is that for a person to escalate or to go to that next level to be a world champion? It's important because the other person is. Hmm. That's that's what gives it importance because if you're not doing it, someone else is. Yeah. When you were coming through, like who, who were the fighters you were looking up to? Oh, Frank Shamrock. Oh, he's the best, <laughs> he was the best. I got to meet him once and I was like, wow, I was wow. starstruck. I trained with him once. Larry Papadopoulos took me to his gym in America yeah. after a, a Japan trip. Was what was he like, man? Good bloke. Yeah. Yeah, he was humble. Man, yeah, he was, all the he was the fighters are humble. Yeah, he was he was a pioneer in MMA yeah, back he then. Was, like yeah. he, he was um, he had some massive bouts and some yeah. big wars. I think he was the first to to show what fitness can do. Hmm. Like man, he was built like a tank. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was he sort of the first person <laughs> to go, fuck, that's the that's the pinnacle, that's the standard? To me, yeah. Yeah. Who yeah. else was there back in those days? Um, it was Tank Abbott. He was excited to see. Who? Tank Abbott. Tank Abbott. It was just like a... What about... Come knocking on your door, collecting money. <laughs> 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 That's how he looked. <clears throat> and um, what about in the boxing world? Were you more of a MMA guy, boxing guy, kickboxing guy? Oh, I love Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I still love him. Yeah. I can listen to him speak for hours. <laughs> <laughs> He's, a, he's quite the philosopher as well. Eh? He's, you can see he, he's been through a lot. You know, you know, when you watch him early in his career, <coughs> Sorry. you don't realise his boxing IQ, the way mm. he looks at boxing, even the history of it, right? When you, when, you, when you look back at it, like, did you look at the boxers like Marvin Hagler, Sugar Ray and all that kind of stuff back in those days? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, like, trying, you're still trying to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know, like, you know, my first love was probably like bodybuilding, right? So I was looking at bodybuilding. I got to remember all the way back to 1966 when Larry Scott was the first Mr. Olympia. Is that how you look at MMA, boxing, the history of well, it, sort of, the passion? MMA sort of started in my era, I guess. Yeah. So I was there to witness it. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you think of the UFC these days? Like Dana White's been instrumental in the graph of – UFC, um, when you look at him and you watch him, you know, it was like nothing could stop him from getting to where he, he was going to go. Yeah. You know, when the chips were down, like he was like, mate, nothing's going to stop me. I'm going to run through brick walls. Yeah. What was that like seeing the sport that you're, you, you love, that you've grown up watching? 
it, it was it was good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was, um, it was needed. Yeah. It um, it brought it forward. Yeah. Because who knows where it would have went. Um, it was quite underground. Yeah. When um I started out and for a while. Yeah. Um, and then Dana White brought it to, I guess, the public. Yeah. Got it legalized in a lot of states and countries. Because yeah. I think they were trying to ban it, weren't they? Well, they were trying to ban it. Well, Obviously, wanna... it's pretty brutal. My wife can't even watch it. Oh, really? I love watching it. She struggles <laughs> to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one of the first UFCs in Darling Harbour. I don't even know what year. Maybe 95. Elvis fought in it. Elvis Sinisic fought in it. He knocked out this Canadian. Um, a couple of guys fought in it. And um, they were throwing like cans and that at Carson Gracie. Because <laughs> really? they were on the ground. They, no one understood groundwork. No one understood what grappling was. Yeah. And, um, yeah, they were booing it. So that that's where it was at. No one really, I guess, the perception of it was human cockfighting, wasn't it? Well, it's pretty, like, it's pretty brutal, bro. Like, I mean, I, I love watching it. But when I'm watching it, like, you, you've been in the ring. I mean, how many times have you been knocked out? Once. Once. Cold? Yeah. Once. And when you're sparring, how many Hits do you get where you go, fuck, man. I'm, Many. <laughs> fuck. That's what I'm talking about. Like, it's a tough sport. Yeah. Like, do you, do, were you getting, having these workouts and having these sessions going, fuck, man, I, I don't I don't feel the best, but you just keep. There are some days, of course. Yeah. yeah ups and downs. Yeah. It's very colourful. Well, how long do those, those concussions and those little, you know, oh, knocks we, last? A week. A week. Spar after and, a and, and, week. But you're still working out. You don't out. listen to the doctor. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> so if you're... Okay. If you can spar again, you're sparring again. Say so if you've had a colourful life, right, from 13, <laughs> you said you got in a bit of trouble. How many street fights did you get in there? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's why, like, when mouth guard, headgear, referee, fuck, bring it. So Easy. What was it like? Okay, is that because there was a lot of fucking like there was a lot of punch-ons, knockouts, hit with bats? Yeah, proper there hits. There were like objects. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like in my era, growing up, like there was a lot of gang violence. Yeah, um, mucked around in gangs and that. Like yeah, like machetes, bats, yeah. trolley pole, you name it. Yeah, <laughs> I got hit with most of them. Majority of these things. Um, so I think fighting is, is a, probably the best outlet because you can adapt to it quite easily. Yeah. Obviously, you're, you, you've subdued your aggression from what it was like back then. What was it like? How would, would the light, would the fire light straight away? Like, you know, uh, again, did you have you a short through, fuse? Did you have yeah. a short fuse? How short was the fuse? Like, if I looked at you, was it on? If I looked at you the wrong way, was it on? Somatically, I'd start. Yeah, I'd start. <laughs> You'd start. You know what I mean? You'd clench your fist and yeah. it would just start. The, just the wrong look. It wouldn't be on, on but it not would, far off. it would start brewing. Yeah. It's like if I said, attitude hey, problem, you know? if I said, what the fuck are you looking at? Is it on or what? Oh, it's on. That's on. <laughs> <laughs> and win, lose, a draw. Well, okay, what if I said, sorry, man, what are you looking at? Is that on still? And go, yeah, it's on. It's on. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to prove yourself. You know why I say this? Because I remember Pete Manises. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same like era. A wrong, yeah, same era. Like yeah, wrong look areas. from a distance. And it's like he's going up to the guy. Yeah, Peter was mad. <laughs> <laughs> I remember we were out and it was a Wednesday night and I knew the other guy looking at him. Yeah. And it was on. Yeah. Okay, bro, he doesn't even want to fight. Like, <laughs> okay, he doesn't even want to fight you. He goes, looked at me the wrong way. Was, it, was that how you were? Yeah, it didn't matter. You're also trying to prove something to yourself, prove something to others, prove something to the world. Um, I guess it's you're becoming a man in your own way, mm. in a twisted way, I guess. Might have. It's, it's, all, it all comes, it's your values, you know what I mean? It comes down to your values. And yeah. your values change as you get older. I think that's all it is. Yeah. Um, I, I think people don't realise what kind of an era it was. It was yeah, it was pretty. Yeah. Is, that, is it the same now? A lot of people get through. Is it the same now? I don't know. Because back then it was pretty bad. Pretty bad. It was just more hot. It was hostile. It was hostile, yeah. 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 Especially <laughs> <in> Coogee. <laughs> Coogee was chaotic. <laughs> well, this was uh, the pool hall. 
Did you yeah, get any trouble? Yeah, the bus shelter. Did you get any you know, the trouble in the pool hall? <clears throat> no, nah, the bus shelter. The bus shelter. Tell me a story, bro. Once, um, give, me, give me a couple of stories. My mate bro. and I were walking down Arden Street hmm. and we seen one of the boys because we knew one of the boys from here. He goes, boys, turn around. They're all at the bus stop. And my mate's like, let's turn around. <laughs> I mean, let's go. So we walked out to the bus stop and one of the leaders was down there fighting with his girlfriend. Perfect time to uh, walk into that. And, um, yeah, it was on on site. As soon as he saw me and I saw him, it was on. He had a long neck, I had a twist up. I splashed him first. <laughs> 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 I cut my hand open. Um, he's jumped up and just started hammering into me and then it was on. And then I just got jumped. And then I ran into a shop <clears throat> looking for something. It was Peter's shop. <laughs> 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 it was his parents' shop. And they're like, no, get out. No, get out. So I got out and then, yeah, the cops took me away. And Yeah. Yeah. You know what's funny? But the funny thing is, sorry, um, the next day, one of those leaders came to my house. Yeah. I'm like, round two. <laughs> Long way to go. And um, no, nah, we called a truce. And then we went and got in trouble <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> together <laughs> that morning. Because of what was there an AVO? Couldn't get caught? No, we went, we just went and did something. Yeah. We just met up and just that mindset and in that world, we just went and did something and got yeah. in trouble. Yeah. When, you, when I look at some of the best people that I've seen that help kids came from that troubled, the streets, like, like say you, how many kids you help? Pete, Fidel. Like I look at you guys, I, I've never seen people so good with kids. Like when people look at you guys and go, oh, mate, th those guys are thugs. They're actually the best people that can, can help relate. kids because they're relatable, We know right? what they're going through, you know. The anxiety they feel. Yeah. <laughs> you can't buy that, but you can't buy that experience from those individuals like you guys. You know, like, we're, we're, I, I believe, like, you know, I mean, Fidel was instrumental in helping my daughter, you know what I mean? And, like, I've seen you help so many people, bro. Like, it's ridiculous. And I think if you don't come from that life, you, you almost have a bit of a disadvantage in helping people. I'm not, I'm not saying you yeah, can't help no, people, I, yeah. like, coming from there, but I feel like, as bad as it was, and it's not like I condone all that kind of behaviour. Like you, if someone looked at you the wrong way now, you you, you just walk the other way. Yeah, like I'll give you an example. Of what taught me this? Um, I don't even know what year it was. I was um double. I was reverse parking on Bondi Road outside Kaleidoscope when Kaleidoscope was across the road, and this motorbike rider goes past me with a finger and beat me. I go fucking what? So I'm chasing him down, and I've cut him off, and I jumped out, and he goes. Mate, 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 he goes, before you hit me, he goes, I'm HIV positive and my medication makes me irritable. And I stopped and went, oh, fuck, all right. And he took his helmet off and started talking to me. And I started what? feeling, he started telling me about his, the, way, the, the state he's in um, and um, what he's experiencing in life. And I'm like, far out. I'm like, this guy's dying. Wow. And I'd be the same way. Yeah. So... I, I'm conscious about it now. Like if I'm driving and someone's speeding past me and my daughter's and I go, maybe they're rushing to the hospital. Uh, we don't know. Yeah. Someone could be dying. You don't know. Well, you don't know what people are going <clears> through. You don't know right? what they're going through. Like no one, happy people don't walk around doing that. Like there's something mm. going on because yeah. happy people don't do that. Happy people don't, don't, don't look at people the wrong way. Happy people don't be rude to people. I mean, happy people don't do these things. Mm. So there's something going on. Yeah. And unless you want to get involved in that, leave it. Yeah. I think when we look at society as a whole, we we tend to not dig deep enough to understand what people have been through. Life's too right? fast. You look at social media these days, for instance, right? If you look at it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing highlight reel. And then we look at all the, you know, the UFC fighters, all the superstars that we see there in Vegas, they're here, they're, they're everywhere. And, you know, you call it FOMO. It's like a fear of missing out missing, on everything. Yeah. And so it, I think it magnifies everything far worse. Like think about it. When we were in our 20s, we didn't have money. We had nothing, right? No. We're, you know, lows, uh, socioeconomic families. But we felt like we never really missed out, right? 
Yeah, that's right. Like you just felt like you're having fun, right? Yeah. But imagine we were there in that mindset and then we're watching everything on social media. I think it would have magnified things to be far worse. You know what I mean? Because like everyone, if you're if you're boxing today, you're going, fuck, all these guys are going out, they're at this dance party, they're at that dance party. You know, I'm boxing, I'm trying to stay disciplined, but they're having fun and I'm struggling. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't look at things like that. I, I, I'm, I, I'm guessing you're the same. But I like to do my work and then I just want to go home and do, do nothing. The same. Yeah. Did you ever think you were going to be like that? <laughs> <laughs> but my manager once said to me, he goes, you're better off being at the party, think about a fight, than at your fight, at training. You're better off being at the party, think about training and fighting, rather than being at training, think about partying. Partying, yeah. 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 You put some amazing quotes on your Facebook. Like, where <laughs> the fuck out. did that shit come up from? Because they're mad one-liners, free-liners. Like, you make people guess. Do you come up with that yourself, bro? Yeah, some yes, some no. Yeah, yeah. some yes, some no. <laughs> I trip out. I, I don't think they're tripping out because they're fucking. <laughs> when I read it, I go, "This guy's talking logic here." <laughs> it's very logical what you say. Some people love and it. You some get people. people hate it. Mm -hmm. I've seen the comments. <laughs> yeah, I read the comments. It is what it is. Why, why do the people get so worked up, man? They have every right mate, to, though. Huh? They have every right to. It's just. There's freedom some... of opinion. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? Like I'll put up a post on Instagram and TikTok, <clears throat> or both the same, and the TikTok people are completely different people. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. They're funny, man. Like, they, <laughs> I find the comments funny. Yeah. I'm like, on I, it. I go, <laughs> I go, man, why are you taking things so seriously? Yeah, yeah, right. You know what I mean? They, like it's, they see something and it's a different, completely different perception to what to what the message is there. Different generation, maybe. Well, well how old are the people making comments oh. on your page? <laughs> they look like they're a bit older, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was one of the worst comments you got? Oh, I can't remember. I ignore them all. <laughs> I do. Otherwise, I'll get stuck into it. I, I just sit back and I don't laugh. I sit back and just, all right, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> so, mean, you see, that's you see, that's a smart thing, right? Are you still involved? Yeah. But no. Nah, what for? When you get involved, it's like they're taking the energy. You're I, there for hours. I, I look at the post. I go, this guy's talking logic here. I'll go, how does that person see it differently? That spins me out. Like I look at it and go, man, we're living in a fucked up world if that person can't see the logic. It's because everything logic. you There's say two, is – There's two sides of this world I'm noticing, you know? Like, yeah. I, 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 you know, sometimes I go to myself – you, you, look, what what I love about you, there's a lot of things I like about you. I like your discipline. I like you, your, your transition. You know, I've known you for a long time. You, you've you overcome so many obstacles and challenges. I hear so many good things about you all the time. But you've overcome so many. Um, but what I like about you too is when you, when you look at the world of like, say, looking at things logically, right, which is what you do, and, it's, and, 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 and coming from where you came from, right? Like you're in the streets fighting, fighting your way out. To have that insight, and you, you only, it's funny, you only get that insight from the people that have been in the streets and that have overcome so many challenges and obstacles. So the person that's the square head, you look at them and then you get that person that doesn't have any logic. Okay, how can they not understand it? I go, they're so smart here, but yet they don't understand this. I go, this is totally bewildering. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I take a lot of people on. It's just a different, way, different way of learning. How is it a different way? Well, fuck, but I'm then, the same thing. Yeah. Like you shouldn't, like, you, you, when you're looking at certain things, you should back up But then it's like, like us memorizing a textbook. No fucking shit. No chance. It. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you there. I was never good at school. <laughs> Did you finish school or not? No. I sh look. I should have left in year nine. ten. I should have left in year ten. Yeah. I had no right to go to eleven or twelve. The only reason I went was because we were having fun. That's no good. Yeah. I but wish I did. <laughs> it was, you should have stayed because it wasn't that. Look, you probably would have got. They kicked didn't out. let me. Which school <laughs> did you go to? 
Uşku değil mi onu görüyor? Bu uçku bu. Kenny, you got to understand. <laughs> this guy was a pioneer <clears throat> in fighting. He's a freak of a coach. Does the street buffet. Looks after the homeless. Can you fucking believe that? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And this is what I love about it. This is what I love about the story. Is you can go through all these hardships, but this is what you get at the end. And this is where, like, people have to have more hope in themselves as well. For sure. You know. Got to focus on your blessings. Well, how many schools you go through anyway? I started Marcelin. Yeah. How long was your last there? <laughs> I think two years. That's You're not... 80 and on, I can remember. Yeah. And where'd you go after that? Um, Maroubra. Lakes built me. <laughs> South Sydney. <laughs> South Sydney. And Dulwich Chill. Oh, then I went to this little, little house. It was really weird there. Oh, like 10 kids in this house. <laughs> like, yeah, I, was, I lasted one day. I'm like, nah, it was just weird. Like, you know, Fuck. it was like a... Funny school, man. <laughs> it was like school. eight or ten kids, and yeah, it was just I don't know what it was. So, then, year nine, yeah, then where'd you go? Then I went to Minda, the <laughs> boys' home. Okay, how long were you there for? Uh, a bit. I got sentenced nine months. Nine but months. I got out, I got out. Yeah. On Griffiths, Griffiths from Man. Yeah. Um, it was like home detention. Yeah. And then um, I went to East Sydney as part of my bail condition, and they expelled me. And I was like, whoa. That's a breach of bail. Wow. My dad got me off that. Thank God. And then I tried TAFE. And then not. And then my dad just had to talk to me. <laughs> he just like, find yourself a girlfriend and go back to karate. I had to hear it. That's what I had to hear. <laughs> yeah. So, so you I found myself a girlfriend. girlfriend and went back to karate. How long did the girlfriend last? Long. Long, yeah? Years. Years? Yeah. About six years. Huh? Six years. Yeah. Yeah, five or six years. Yeah. And then I went back to karate and I put on a lot of weight, a lot, 96 kilos mm. with Jim Phillips. Yeah. And um, I entered the tournament as a heavyweight. I, I got smashed. I loved it, but not at that weight. Mm. So I think within six months, I went from 96 kilos to 69. And I won. Oh, I wow. won the state titles as a lightweight. And I was only like a yellow belt. Wow. <laughs> and then Jim was like, you got this. <laughs> Was that the turning point? <clears throat> yeah. Was that, was that the big turning point, like six years with your girlfriend? I think because Jim Phillips believed in me. Sorry, yeah. I spat. Yeah, that's all right. I think he believed in me and I, I needed that. Mm. That's all I really wanted. Yeah. Um, and he just pushed me and pushed me and pushed me. And, and I started performing really well in training. And then I became a living student. Yeah. That didn't last long. Then I watched my first UFC as I was living at, um, at the dojo in Kyokushin. And then... I hunted for a jiu-jitsu instructor because I saw Hoist Gracie. Yeah. And I found Mick Spinks. And he was a kickboxer, but was a blue belt in jiu-jitsu. Gave it a crack, loved it. And then just, yeah. Where was that at? Kingsford. Kingsford. Yeah, so Jim was in Kenzo. And yeah, above where you were. Oh, where you were. Oh, okay. Down yeah. At, down at um, Anzac Pro. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> in the same building. Wow. Because you had Auto 1 downstairs, eh? No, we were next door. Oh, no. We were next door. Auto one, yeah, I know exactly where auto one was. We yeah, we were door. above auto one. Auto one, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you lived up there, yeah, <laughs> for a bit. How long? Not long. Something happened. Did you get another fight? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> so it looks like your best years are now ahead of you with what you're doing right now. I always see that way, though. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Were you always seeing it that way before, too? Oh, once I found, yeah, once my values changed, yeah. Once yeah. I, um, when was that? I had a good set. Probably when I'm um, sorry. I'll keep That's fine. Right, <laughs> um, probably when I'm um, when I made it to Japan. Yeah. My first fight in Japan. I was yeah. like, This is getting real. You know? Was that when the belief? And I'm like, yeah. And I read a book from um, an author called Paul Hannah. No relation to John. No relation or, to John. Yeah, because his brother's name is Paul as well. Yeah. And um, I read that. It was called Believe and Achieve. It was a two in one. My mum gave it to me. Hmm. Believe and Achieve and you can do it. And yeah. that sort of changed. And I actually read the book. <laughs> it was the first, <laughs> the first book I ever read. <laughs> yeah, I pretty much taught myself how to read. Yeah. Um, I read that book and um, yeah, I just started believing myself. And um, I'm like, I want to do this. Because hmm. I, was, I, was, I was winning and losing, winning and losing. Yeah. I had a colourful career. But then... um. Once I started believing myself, I got yeah. to Japan. Wow. Didn't even think about it. 
And, uh, and my first Japanese fight, I, that's right. I had like I had like the flu or something. Like my joints were all gone, and I had three weeks to prep for it. My wow. first fight on the K1. Three and, weeks to yeah, prepare, three weeks and to, you had the flu. And it was my only shot. You say fight. no, I never call you back. Yeah. I was like, Fuck, let's do it. But I, yeah, lucky I was training all year round. But I was sick. I remember, and um, I won. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Was, Did you spend time overseas as well? Like I mean, I was you're back fighting, and forth. yeah, back and forth. Yeah, I went to America. Yeah, a couple of times, for a few months at a time. Yeah, what was Japan like fighting there? What were the people like? What was the venue like? Very different, man. Like, yeah. we had fans, like, yeah. lots and lots of fans. Yeah. Um. Yeah, once we're on the plane, and Tony Del Vecchio, yep. he came over with us. He was training at the time. I'm training my boxing. Him and Mix Mix were training me, and um. Some lady was asking who we were. They thought we were rugby league players. And he said K1. And then he said, he translated, like he tried to tell them who I was, but it took a while. And he finally got my name over. It took me like, I don't know, probably half an hour to get off the plane. Or signing wow. autographs and that. So that's how it is over there. <laughs> Do you miss that? That well, was part of the yeah. journey. Yeah. yeah. It's nice to think back, but it's yeah. just part of the journey. It was, yeah. That's what it was at that time. How important is like... You know, we, when we look at our lives is validation of ourselves and, and these, this next transition that you're in. Mm -hmm. Like, what does this next transition look like for you? Very stable. <laughs> yeah, very much more stable. Yeah. 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 Is it more clearer of where you're heading? Like, it's simpler. Simpler, yeah. 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 So is there, obviously, you've got a lot of fighters that you're helping out, you're coaching. Is that sort of the transition of where you're moving into now? It seems to be, yeah. 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 What do you mean it seems to be? I always said no. Because <laughs> I wasn't the best fight, the easiest fighter to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, nah, fighters. Could, could you mean by, because, hey, five days, you're on. Yeah. That yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now you're thinking, if I'm coaching these guys and I tell them, hey. I got good advice for them, hmm. I believe. And it's working so far. Yeah. Um. No, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm ignited to go down that path. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you're kind of going down that path, Yeah. to be honest with you, because. Because even the more I do it, the more I seem to know as well, hmm. that I didn't know I knew. <laughs> well, it's funny, because of your experience, you've probably got a lot in the toolkit and the toolbox that, that that is sort of part of your IQ and in, 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 in martial arts, in boxing. And you, you just pull out from experience and you don't even know where you're pulling it out from. Yeah. And then you go, where it the makes fuck did sense. I get that? It works. Yeah. 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 So I believe there's no right and there's no wrong. It's whatever works. Yeah. So you're almost molding into the athlete or understanding what, what's necessary. Yeah, because everyone's different. All my fighters are different. Yeah. So I've got to deal with them differently. Yeah. But your basic fundamentals are your basic fundamentals. Yeah. You get them wrong, it's a rocky road. Yeah. So you're doing the street buffet in Wollamaloo. Now you're doing one in Lexa. Yeah, what, what made you What made you do that? I just saw the need when I opened mm. the gym up last June. Mm. What are some of the people on the streets going through? Like, what do you see? In Lexa? Like, yeah, Lexa and pretty much everywhere. Like, well, in Lexa, you... more, it's more housing. There's not really people on the street street, mm. like in Wollamaloo. But there are people in need. Like I interview, uh, I spoke to a lady. Then interview, I spoke to her, and um, yeah, I was closing. I was, I was locking up from a street buffet, and she was on the phone saying, "If I was off a street buffet, I'd be stuffed from Thursday to Monday." I go, "Excuse me, did you mean what you just said?" And she's like, "What? What do you mean?" I go, "What you said about a street buffet," and she said, "Yeah." And then I go, "Can I get that on camera?" And she was telling us, "It's on my Instagram." Yeah, yeah. Did you, did you see it? Yeah, I did. I did because I remember you told me, guys, Matt, you got to watch this. This is what they're going for. That's why yeah. I'm asking you the question. Yeah, like they can pay their bills, but they can't. See, look, if you don't pay your power bill, you're gonna lose your power. If yeah. You don't pay this, you're gonna lose that. But with food, you can sort of starve a bit, or you can mm. eat lesser. So we're sort yeah. of filling that gap. Yeah. Well, what, what's the difference between Wollamaloo and Lexo? What, what's Wollamaloo the is people that are actually sleeping, sleeping on the street. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So you got regulars that you've. Yeah. How, how long is the biggest regular that you've had there? Still there. Yeah, but from where? Ten years ago? Yeah. Ten years, the same person? Yeah. Couple. What, what did they go through to get there? In what sense? 
Like tra- what? Trauma. Trauma. It's all, it's all trauma. Trauma. So their families have abandoned them. They've got nowhere to go. They've got... Anything. It's all yeah. different different stories. Yeah. And so Street Buffet is their family, really, essentially, isn't it? Yeah. We connect with them once a week. Yeah. Yeah, that's our purpose, to connect. Yeah. So to do... For you to do Lexo, I mean, you wouldn't have ever done Lexo if you hadn't taken over the gym there. Yeah, exactly. Really? I wouldn't have seen. I wouldn't have been in there. Yeah. And now that you've been doing it for a while and you, and you say it's running itself a lot better, what were some of the challenges when you started over there? Um, they wanted to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> no, me coming in. I was trying to change their lives. I was trying to lecture them in that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you were trying to lecture them? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> I, was, I, was learning, I was learning myself. I was, uh, you should do this and you should do that. And they're like, fuck, me. I'm like, what? <laughs> Don't tell me what to do and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm not doing the right thing here. So um, <laughs> I worked out that it's just a happy hour. Yeah. Um, yeah. We we'll just go there. We have conversation. We connect with them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if there's any violence, there's not even any violence. If there's any hostilities with themselves, yeah. Um, if they do start us, the rest of the community will gang up on them because they know yeah. they need us there, so they yeah. don't want us to go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've built friendships. Yeah. And connections. So rain, hail, or shine, it's on. We're there. Yeah. The, yeah. Mm. So, so Woolman lose at between. I think it's fourth. Four four thirty to set up for a five o'clock start. Five. And like same, says same. same, exactly the yeah. same. And where are you most of the time? Both. Both. What do you mean yeah. both? Oh one um Lexo's on Saturday. Right, okay. And Willow's on a Sunday. Oh, okay. So Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. So it's a lock in for those yeah. two days. Yeah. yeah. You you're not there every week. <laughs> most. Fuck. Right. Oh, I've had time off though, and yeah. Tony. Tony's in um Tony Hull, he's like my head volunteer in a yeah. yeah. He does a better job than me. Yeah. <laughs> he takes no shit. Yeah. <laughs> He's really? good. He's good. Yeah. I'm yeah. a bit dumb too. I'm a bit nice. Yeah, too nice. He's just like, nah. He's good. Yeah. Um, and does the government get behind someone like this? They have once or twice yeah. in the past, but no, we're self funded. We're wow. considered grassroots. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And have you, have you found that there's a lot more people volunteering and helping out? Yeah. And doing all that? In the beginning, I'll put it out there on Facebook, come and help me. Mates would jump on, jump off, jump on, jump off. It's just random. Um, and then once I put a name and a logo to it, hmm. I think people needed that. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, good volunteers every week. And we've had some weeks with no volunteers. I'm like, sorry, guys, there's no food. Fuck. <laughs> what do you do then? <laughs> you walk away <laughs> with your head hanging shame. I'm like, Fuck. So... <laughs> so they get hungry for the I mean It's not an easy thing Doing it No And if you've fed them For that long You'd yeah. expect them To go fuck Yeah But we've had to Take a rain check Oh well, yeah do, do you find people When they go there they get, They're get taking enough food For the whole week So um, For a couple of days A couple of days Yeah Yeah Yeah, yeah. yeah. See we used to serve On plates Paper plates mm. And then when COVID came in We had to um, Put them in containers And I think that it's a better idea because yeah. they can take take it home. Take it away. Some do have fridges. Yeah. Or they can borrow a fridge. Yeah. So. How important is it for people out there to help someone else that's, you know, that, that needs more help or people that are, are suffering? How important is it, like, in, in a society that we live in today because we're mm. always just so self-consumed to help ourselves? In theory, ourselves. it's very important, but yeah. you can't force anyone to do anything. Yeah. It's up to them yeah. how they feel about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've had so many people just talking shit for, for five years. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to come, blah, blah, whatever. Yeah. It's, just it's our own journey. It's up to you. Yeah. I just, shouldn't say talking shit. There's probably stuff going on in their life, you know what I mean? Yeah. They can't make it. Yeah. Um. If you can, you can. If you can't, yeah. you can't. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. 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 This next world record um, for- Actually, can you delete that bit? <laughs> <laughs> They're not talking shit. People have their own. You know what I mean? No, you mean you mean the people like like say I go I'm coming. Yeah, you're talking about me. Yeah, people have their own long lives. Yeah, they but can't. you're talking about me. Yeah, that's normal. <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, I'm me. <laughs> don't worry about no, it. No, I didn't mean it sound no, that I way. No, I know. I know what you meant. Like I go, hey, hey, I'm coming, and and I don't turn up, and you go, he's got his own shit. Yeah. 
but I'm talking shit too. <laughs> I should either turn the fuck up or shut the fuck up. <laughs> you said no, that, I don't mean. No, but I know what you mean. Uh, yeah. I know what Maybe you mean. Maybe others won't know. But well, people go, oh, I'm going to come down. You know yeah. And they don't show up. Yeah. Like, you know, talk's yeah. cheap. That's what I know what you and mean. And also, like, with, with I know with, what you mean by that. Yeah. I know people can take it out of context. <laughs> Like and also with our with our with our concept, we rely on volunteers and their promises. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's nothing. There's no con- like, there's no contract. There's nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We rely on the person saying yes. I'm coming with this. Yeah, yeah. So, fuck you know. In Fiji, how much food we were giving back to the family? We're getting so much food. Then I was like, here, take it back. These people aren't eating all this clean food. <laughs> like, go oh, take containers back to your million get hungry. <laughs> yeah. They get hungry. But you're right. Like, like there's so much food. That gets thrown out. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's not that hard to give food that you're going to throw out. You know? It's just. Is there a lot of Easter eggs it. for this weekend? A lot Sorry? of Easter eggs for this weekend? There's a few, yeah. Yeah. People Any red donated. cards? Hey? Any red cards? <laughs> <laughs> That's your job. No, no, no. I've got to go down there. Kenny, we've got to go down there. I've got to give red cards. Okay, listen, guys, no red cards this week. But Ian, red card for you because you've got to fight. You can't have any of this. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know Lee Brockman? He played for the Swans. Oh, fuck, no, I've heard of the name, yeah. We muck around with that heaps. <laughs> He's giving red cards. <laughs> we give each other red cards because of you. <laughs> there you go, Kenny's catching on. I'm going to go down there. I shouldn't say I'm the guy he's talking about, the guy that's talking shit. Oh, he's eating a cup of He's down. not. What the fuck are you coming down with, man? <laughs> but what I want people to know, um, you know, we've always spoken for an hour, bro. That's good. I told you it was a conversation. Oh, no, that's, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, when he first came in here, he goes, fuck, man. I'm Am I doing all right? To say. Okay. How many good stories has he got? Are they you know okay? I mean? Fuck, I know if they're okay. Oh. People are going to look at I can't at get into detail. No, I don't, don't, don't want you to get into detail. No, I don't want you to get into detail. But, yeah. you know, what people don't realise is that we, we came from a past where we don't like talking about it. Yeah. And... When we look at our past, it was normality, man. It was just normal, right? We don't we didn't look at it as a big deal. Yeah. And I think people learn through stories. Like I, I, I get people coming, oh, what was the past like? What was the past like? And you don't want to explain it because you don't want them to go through what we went through. Because they might not the reason is that you're worried that they're gonna come out alive. We just well, had no fear. Yeah. We just thought <laughs> You can't die. <laughs> true? Yeah. Isn't that true? It's like about you, killing them, not dying. Yeah, it's <laughs> but, but, but you, you think that, and, and I think we've learned a lot from our experiences. Not many people, like not everyone comes out the other end. Either, I know. Like so many people How many have you seen? are on heaps of, like on drugs, dead, dead suicide, like all of that happens. The Deported? ones that, yeah, the, yeah but the ones that come out, be actually become good leaders for the other people. Yeah. As bad as it is, most people don't come out. And that's why we always say to people, don't do or go down the road or the track that we went down because most people's lives end the wrong way. Yeah. Most people don't come out of it. Exactly. And that's and that's why we tell people, like, well, you you guys live that way, you know, and especially like obviously you're in the fighting game. But they go, you live that way. It's okay. It's not okay. Like we don't condone any of that. Right. That's why we said people don't do it because the percentages of the people that don't come out is far higher. <laughs> and the percentages exactly. of the people that come out is a lot less. You know what I mean? And it could be based on luck. We don't know. <laughs> well, there's a lot of luck there, bro. I reckon, there's, I reckon there's a lot of luck. <laughs> or, you know, God was looking down on us and they said, you know what, I think you could help the world if i can if you can get through this you can you you, you can be an impact and that's what you're doing you're, you're showing that and you're you're a person that flies under the radar you know what i mean yeah. and i know we, we can't go into the whole story but there's enough of the story <laughs> school wasn't for you yeah year nine was like the tap on the shoulder you got into martial arts thank god for what the world done and and, and giving you the power to Give back to the young kids. You're feeding the homeless, bro. Like, I mean, it's a fucking huge thing. Like, to do the things that you do. Like, I, I was I was telling Kenny and my other guys, I go, Ian's not a normal person. I was telling people about you um, yeah. um, for a while. It was funny because when I was talking to Phil, Phil goes, mate, 
Ian's got a lot of stories. I go, I know he's got a lot of stories. You know, because you got you got to get him on. First of all, like if people want a great boxing coach, want their kids to learn from someone that's been through it all. It's got his own daughter that's helping so many people. It's ho- helping the homeless, feeding the homeless. We've got to go see at the Lex- Lexington place, yeah. the gym down there, um, the kids that you're helping, and I, and, I, and I'm so happy that it's funny because when I was with Fidel, we were Fidel. And I said, you know, Ian's doing amazing things. I guess, man, I'm glad he's 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 transitioned into the into the community and helping the people there because that's what the community needed. Yeah, yeah. And it's exactly what they got because he was the same. Fidel's the same. Yeah. So it's funny, like, and Fidel came from the same streets, just in a different area, as you did. You know, what I mean, there's no yeah, difference. Yeah. And you know what, the people, the world, the world needs more people like you. You, you guys, to me, are the un, unsung heroes. You know what I mean? Like, you can have this, you know, glorified, you know, individuals on social media, but really, like, I know you guys. Like, yeah. I know you guys do the type of job that the world needs. That 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 needs to be seen more. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate you coming on, bro. No, thank you for having me. I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> I told you it was going to be fucking easy. <laughs> Did I, was it easy or not? Be honest with me. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I just Were mumble you... a lot. <laughs> no, I think I took a lot of the mumbling out. Oh, good. Didn't I take a lot of the mumbling out? <laughs> yeah. Did I, did I tell you it was going to be just a conversation? Yeah, you did. Yeah. Was it, did it? Was I right or wrong? You're right. No. Nah. Like always. No, nah, I'm not fucking right. Hey, can I, I wish also, I was, bro. Can I, um, Chuck, can you, you cut and paste, eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah? No, nah, because my turning point was when I got jumped. And then he got Tell killed. Well, I don't know who it is. You were at Much Park. Much Park, yeah. In the what East year? Gardens. Oh, man, probably 90. Can we throw this in? Yeah, I want you to. Because this is, and then my dad said, want to get a girlfriend and start training. Bro, the whole podcast was good anyway, but I want to hear this part. Yeah, if you can cut this in. No, that this was... is in now, bro. Well, I'm not finished. Keep okay. going. No, nah, because um, that was my turning point. Because yeah. I nearly died. I was, I was, I got jumped. Um. We're all, we're all at Much Park. I don't know how many of us. Heaps just in the drink. And there was fights all night. Fight after fight after fight. I don't even know how many fights I had that night. Mm. And then carloads of older blokes come. And they started, and we all scattered. And my mate was getting jumped. And me <laughs> turned around and run back to help my mate. And got slaughtered, man. The club locks. Wow. And um, I ended up in hospital. Yeah. How old were you then? I think 16. About 16, my hair, like, I was just covering up, just, I got smashed. Um, my mum thought she was walking to the morgue. And wow. I was, she thought it was a morgue, like, sort of had a bit of a freak out. She thought I was in the morgue. Um, and it was a af- couple of weeks after that, my dad said, why don't you go back to Because I also said, I'm not going to let this happen to me again. Something's going to change. Yeah. Well, um, and who had a talk to you at that point? Was anyone talking to you or was it, was it just your own mind? My own mind, like I didn't, mm. I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But how far really away were I you guess, from? I guess, I guess, I needed that to to learn where I was at because mm. I was going down the wrong path. Yeah, I was, I was down the wrong. I was on the wrong path. I was in, mm. and I had to get off it. So something saved me with the biggest bashing of my life. <laughs> how far <laughs> off do you reckon you were? Like, I was pretty far from, off. Was, you're, you're not far off, and like. How far off was it that you weren't in danger of losing your life at that point? Oh, I was in danger of that every day. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the biggest turning point, 16 years of age. It was the biggest, yeah, 16, yeah, about 16. Yeah. Yeah. The good thing about this show is... But that's the funny thing I just said before, like, the blessing there was getting bashed so badly mm. and surviving it. Yeah. So what I thought was a curse by getting bashed, it actually turned my life around. Wow. <laughs> Sometimes you have to go down to the depths of the end and see your life almost just travel right before you and go, man, am I am I going to live here or am I am I going to change things in my life and be responsible for my actions? Yeah. You know. Yeah. What was your What was your parents like at the time? What was your mum like? If you were to go back and look at her face, traumatized, man. Traumatized. Yeah. Man. Is your mum and dad still alive? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
I used to catch up with them in court. Wow. <laughs> and I'm off again. Yeah. How did you feel like, when you look back at it, go, fuck. They're, 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 they're a different breed, that, that, that the our resilience. Parents, the resilience. Mate. <laughs> like they, there was no giving up on their part, right? No. <laughs> like any sane person might go, man, I'm tapping out. Yeah. 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 But I guess it was our circumstance as well. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. They did the best with what they had, they had at yeah. the time. Yeah. It had its ups. There was ups and downs in there, but yeah. 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 <laughs> it's not easy, man. It's not no. easy. I mean, that era, mascot, East Lakes, when you look at the parents, you know, you, you, you go, fuck, man, what, what a life they, they had. And then you start to question, like, well, what is life about? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I was questioning that at a young age. I remember. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, thanks for that, bro. Yeah. I appreciate the insight, but um, you're a pioneer in the, in, in the sport. You know, you you you've gone through so many different challenges. Like I've I've known you for a long time now. Um, to see what you're doing now, um, it, it's proud. Like I'm I'm a proud person, saying, and I talk highly about you, bro. Wasn't Thank I talking you. highly about him, Kenny? <laughs> like I do, bro. You know, like sometimes. You know, you might not think I'm talking about it, but I'm you know, in, a, in, in a good light going, yeah. you know, there's these amazing people around and you're one of them. Fidel's another person. Pete Manese is another person. These are amazing people doing amazing things and there's so much love and respect for you guys, you know what I mean? And, and I really mean that. I really mean that. Thank you. And we're going to be there for um, Phil's world record. I yeah. have to go there. I've got no choice. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Thank you. Uh, honestly, it's a pleasure. Thanks, bro. Likewise, thank you. That's a wrap.